hey guys welcome back to channel it's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for 21,000 subscribers you guys are the best keep liking commenting sharing everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm going to be reacting to islam wins 2022 fifa world cup so without wasting time let's get into the video Hello everyone, I'm CJ Wellerman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And then once you've done that, then we kindly ask you please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. Even $1 or $5 is a big help and you'll be helping us expose more injustices in the Muslim world. Now let's get into it. The FIFA World Cup still has two weeks left to play, but it's already clear that the ultimate winner will be the religion of Islam. Because for the past four weeks, the Islamic faith has been showcased to a global audience like never before. Think about it. For decades, Americans and Europeans have seen Islam only through the prism of war and political violence in the Middle East and Afghanistan. And because an overwhelming majority of white people never travel to Muslim countries, it's been easy for the United States, Israel and European governments to cast Islam in a negative light for the purpose of advancing their strategic interests and their so-called war on terror. But the FIFA World Cup has literally blown the lid off negative attitudes and stereotypes the Western world has been fed about Islam for decades. Today, Americans, Brits and Europeans are discovering why Islam is the world's fastest growing religion, despite a concerted effort by the Western media to undermine positive reports about Qatar the first Muslim country to host the tournament, which got underway with this incredible recitation of the Quran. <laughs> Cafes and restaurants throughout Doha were painted with murals that quoted the Prophet Muhammad urging good morality with foreign visitors warmly invited into the country's mosque, where many heard the call to prayer and learnt about Islam and its teachings for the first time in their lives. As many Muslims have joked, foreign visitors to Qatar will arrive as David, but leave as Dewa, which is really funny. Except the joke is on Western countries that have falsely painted Islam to be a violent and backwards religion, because entire families did indeed choose to accept the Islamic faith during the tournament. Definitely very touching experience. Yeah. Very nice. Everybody very welcome. Yes, Did anyone force you or you should zip? No. Yeah, I did. Did anyone force you or you should zip? You should zip? Did anyone force you or you like it? You choose it? Put simply, a global audience has been shown a side of Islamic culture that the Western media and Hollywood have long kept deliberately hidden from view to lend support for US foreign policy objectives in the Middle East. But visitors to Qatar are experiencing what it means to be welcomed as a stranger in the Muslim world. And as someone who's lived in a Muslim country for more than a decade and spent time visiting with Palestinians in their homes in Gaza and the West Bank, I can assure you the welcome you receive as a non-Muslim person is second to none, which is why I'm so happy that Qatar has given the rest of the world an opportunity to experience what I have. Friends and family, but we wanted to see for ourselves the experience, the culture, as well as the football itself, and we love it. Everything that has been on the media or Twitter, social media, has been very, very far off exactly from what it is here. Pure love, respect for one another, Everyone's helpful, it's a community oriented. I love it and I definitely can see myself coming back for sure. Notably, this was the first World Cup in which fans from rival countries didn't verbally and physically abuse each other. Why? Because Islam is the only religion in the world to not be hijacked by race or ethnicity. Now watch football fans from all over the world sing Arabic songs in the streets of Qatar. Now 
Now let's remember that Qatar copped a lot of flack for sticking to its Islamic principles in banning sales of alcohol at the tournament stadiums. We heard all the usual allegations of Islamic extremism and whatnot, but here's two points of data that vindicates Qatar's courageous decision to not bend to Western desires. For the first time, families and female attendees felt safe to be at the football. The atmosphere in Qatar was widely described as unprecedentedly friendly and inclusive. But watch what happened when beer-guzzling English and Welsh fans got together in the Canary Islands to watch their respective teams play last week. If that's what you call Western values, then you can see why Qatar and other Muslim countries reject them. But while English and Welsh fans were fighting each other in Europe, watch what happened when fans from bitter geopolitical rivals, the United States and Iran, got together before and after their group stage match in Qatar. <laughs> The tournament also showed that dictatorships and geopolitical rivalries in the Muslim world are not representative of the Muslim people. For instance, when Saudi Arabia defeated tournament favourites Argentina, the win was celebrated by Iranians, Qataris and even Houthi rebels in Yemen. The entire Muslim world saying, today we are Saudi Arabia. Similar sentiments were expressed when Tunisia defeated its former coloniser France and Morocco defeated Belgium, a European country that treats Moroccan migrants like second-class citizens. But rather than gloat in victory, the players from these countries showed the world how Islam guides them towards humility and grace, which is an aspect that religious faith, Western audiences have long been denied a view. The tournament also revealed that despite moves by Arab regimes to normalize apartheid Israel, the Arab and Muslim world remained committed to justice and the Palestinian people. Palestinian flags were flown at every game and Palestinian armbands were worn by their Muslim teams, while crowds sang the words, With spirit and blood, we will redeem you, O Palestine. Qatar also gave British and American fans an opportunity to see through the lies they have been told about the Palestinian people. Today's International Day of Solidarity for Palestinians and we're American citizens and we stand with Palestine and we believe they deserve to be free and we will see it one day. Let's go Palestine! I mean, what do you even say to that other than wow? Because Israel's days as a colonial occupier are over the moment a majority of Americans sound like the Americans you just heard. But this is what Islam does. It not only promotes justice and human rights, but also instructs people on how they may live together in peace and harmony, regardless of race, class or beliefs. And by showcasing the religion in its proper light, Qatar has helped dispel Islamophobic myths and awaken the world to injustices taking place against Muslims in Palestine, Kashmir, India and beyond. But let me end with this. I am a non-religious person but I've never felt closer to Islam than I have during the past few weeks. And while I have no idea what the future holds for me, I do know that this is a religion that fosters community like none other. And we all got to see this for ourselves during the FIFA World Cup. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash we can't produce a stand and grow the show without your help, and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed. An interesting video trying to shed light on the positive things that uh, took place and how uh, under the so-called Qatar that the West speaks so bad about many cultures 
united many countries united you know and people really had a good time others decided to convert others were enjoying the food i would go for the food as well and so many 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 things that were not covered in this video happened you know in that country and um it's it's good that's why it's good to be exposed to stuff because you get to experience something yourself so if you can be through working hard your parents sponsoring you travel as much as you can so that you get to actually see something for yourself if you think thailand is a beautiful place don't just see it in magazines or through the media or whatever the case is travel to that country see it for yourself if you feel zambia is the best uh, place to be for holidays travel there meet the people taste the foods and see what happens you'll find that um many opinions that we've formed about certain things certain people certain countries certain groups is usually not the case that's just someone's point of view but not yours you know someone else's point of view doesn't have to be your point of view that's what i'm saying get as much exposure as you need go there yourself interact do what you must and find out for yourself so let me know what you guys think about this video i think it was very very well put and um interesting to watch if there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video